but we just don't have the luxury of time. Yeah, exactly. And kind of going back to what we were talking about, about how brands need to be transparent and everything, recently there has been discussion about finding alternatives to leathers and other materials to ensure that brands are sustainable as possible. What are some of the most innovative and impactful sustainable practices being implemented by some brands today, fashion or not? So um, I do think that there are some interesting new models that are turning up, uh, including the on-demand model, mm-hmm. on-demand models, which are coming from brands like Aloha, Aloha's, and mm-hmm. um, also Telfar, yeah. which um, it'll be interesting to see how that rolls out in a bigger way. Um, you know, Mara Hoffman has talked about, you know, challenging themselves as a company. Can they produce, to your point, less <laughs> yeah. and mm-hmm. still make a profit? Is mm-hmm. there a way to produce less and still make a profit? And um, so, I, you know, I do think that we're seeing new examples of not overproducing. Um, I also think to the point that we were saying about going more local, that mm-hmm. certainly brands and retailers after supply chain issues are trying to move their supply. There's a huge, I don't want to call it a trend, Mm -hmm. but after all the the supply chain disruptions, there's definitely a huge trend towards moving your supply chains, either near shoring or more local production, Mm -hmm. um, local sourcing. So even Walmart, (laughs) of all people, again, who I could, you know, you know, we could go, we could go on about day. that all yeah. day, but even Walmart recently signed a big contract with an LA-based uh, manufacturing mm-hmm. company mm-hmm. and um, has raised their, their minimum wage, and I think uh, it's heading in that direction. Ralph Lauren and also Stella McCartney are partnering with companies that are helping them to upcycle and to, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know, before you couldn't, if you had a blend, that was, for example, polyester yeah. and spandex. There wasn't the technology to right. pull those fiber blends apart, but mm-hmm. they're working with some incredible companies like HiQ, um, which is a, actually a Chinese-based company, mm-hmm. to pull those fibers apart wow, and to upcycle them, which is amazing. So I do think in the future, you know, it will be incredible. Um, Ralph Lauren recently introduced a, t- a test program, mm-hmm. not really a test program, it's their first program, um, which is a cradle cradle program mm-hmm. on their iconic cashmere pieces. Oh, yes, so yes. yeah, so they're trying to have full circularity on just a couple of these key iconic cashmere pieces. Yeah. And then I even um, looking outside of the fashion industry, but still sort of related to the fashion industry, mm-hmm. Starbucks and. You know, certainly they have criticisms against them as yeah. well, right? Mm-hmm. But Starbucks partnered with a company called Cafe Bueno, mm-hmm. which is a fairly new upstart company that mm-hmm. upcycles coffee, used coffee grounds. Oh, and I didn't so, know you could do that. Yeah, so they, they have been taking Starbucks used coffee grounds mm-hmm. and turning them into coffee oil for the cosmetic industry, oh, which wow. helps with cellulite and circulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, cool. Yeah, super cool. And um, they're also able now, they're finding ways to make it into textiles. Wow. So I think that really will be interesting down the line, some of yeah. these new upcycled, recycled waste, waste, mm-hmm. formerly waste materials. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I'm going to stick to to what I've been... Um, yes, please. Vocal. <laughs> But I also, uh, I have to say, while, like the students, Mm -hmm. instructors, professors, um, we also have to do deep research. Yeah. So as I was uh, doing, uh, as I do research to to either um, make sure that I'm accurate, Mm -hmm. that I'm delivering accurate information, and also for new, for new, for newness, you know, you come across all this great innovation. And I have to say, like, I'm going to go back to the Hudson Valley, but... Mm -hmm. I would love brands, especially the fashion, because we're in New York. This is New York. Tap into universities and colleges. Um, some of my students, some of the students I've had directly, some of the students who've just knocked on my door and who wanted to pick my brain. There is so much innovation coming out of the students, out of yeah. the young, out of the young, the young minds. Um, there's a student, uh, Abigail uh, Better. And she just did this. One of the designers. Yes, yeah, she's a senior. I've had her in two of my classes. I had the privilege of having her in two of my classes, uh, creative process and trend forecasting. Mm-hmm. Now she's graduating. So she's a fashion design major and a merch minor. 
And for her honors program, she did this wonderful resource book mm -hmm. of the Northeast, yeah. concentrating on resources such as fibers, mm -hmm. the farm, the species, mm -hmm. where. That's so cool. Uh, and it was just this beautiful little resource book that brands can turn to, mm -hmm. brands can turn to on a smaller scale. Yeah. If we're going to try at this point to try to capture these large scale, um, big units, it, we're all going to be disappointed because, like I said, one system has been in place for 250 years and the other system hasn't been in place a long time, but let's just say gaining traction since the 60s. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like individuals have to take right. small steps. So right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> right. But if you even turn to some of the students, some of the the the, the, the right. innovation coming out of college campuses from um, this week from all over the country, but I'll just focus on this region. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of interesting thing, a lot of interesting um, concepts and ideas, um, like Abigail's book, uh, like other students. There's one student I, I didn't ask permission, so I won't mention her name, but um, I think you have in one of your classes. Mm -hmm. She put a bin in the um, cafe. Yes, I saw that the other day. It recycled. says, please, um, something along the lines of, please put your plastic mm -hmm. bottles and containers because it's going to be converted into that. the um, into fibers. The fabric's going to be, re uh, excuse me, the plastic's going to be re reused to create material for my, tr for my fashion show. So it's even mm -hmm. little innovation like that. And it's a small scale. Mm -hmm. But I, I think trying to tackle it at a massive scale right now. I don't even know if the infrastructure for for it is in place. Yeah, that's amazing to see like these fashion Maris students um, doing all of these things and being very innovative, like you were saying. They're innovative. They, I, I, I know with Abigail, because I worked with her on it a bit, really, really doing deeper dives, interviewing, uh, sometimes not getting calls back, sometimes just keep on going back and just persisting and not only is it a great resource book from uh, an information perspective, but the, the visuals are also very uh, pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I would love brands, whether it's to tap into, tap into all, yeah, which they probably are, which they probably are, but not just amazing. from a design perspective, not just from a yeah, consumption like perspective. A think tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. and I also, I mean, shouldn't be speaking for all the students, the ones I've worked with, I think. They want that. They want to apply yeah. it. They want to apply it. Somewhere. Yeah. And that kind of relates to this next question that I have here. As important as it, as it is for individuals to do what they can to live more responsible lifestyle, ultimately the bigger corporations and companies are the ones with the power to promote that change. So how can the fashion industry work with governments and other organizations to shift the narrative to promote sustainability and responsibility at a larger scale? I feel... You know, I, and then we talk about this a lot in class, but I do feel like a lot of the action, at least in the United States, is happening East Coast, West Coast, yeah. <laughs> as often happens, you know, it's, it's New York and California. Um, so those are kind of, you know, two major hubs for fashion, but they're also two major hubs for legislation and action. Yeah. And so um, some of it is being supported by the industry itself, for example, the Fabric Act. Yeah which is you know looking not only at some of the aspects of manufacturing and mm -hmm. paying fair wages but also even down to the modeling modeling industry mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which i think often gets overlooked um i think companies though are also learning to to act on a more local level mm -hmm. as well and you know where they can't necessarily get the action that they want from big government, so to yeah. speak. They're taking things on on a local level themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was really uh, inspired that Sperry Topsider um, recently won the ACE Award for working with uh, Waterkeeper Alliance, which is a New York-based oh, wow. water organization mm -hmm. that handles the Hudson River. Yeah. And yeah. so they helped actually clean up the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, Sperry Topsider got nothing out of it but a pat on the back. <laughs> exactly. So you know, financially, they didn't really necessarily gain anything, but I think it was just so nice to see uh, them play into that that way. And mm -hmm. you know, Stella McCartney has worked with a Scottish water organization, mm -hmm. and she did a collection, you mentioned her before, she 
actually took water waste that the scott the scottish organization had collected and turned it into one of her collections and even there's a fairly new spanish brand called eco elf which they've been working with the spanish fishermen and yeah they they're fishing nets are a huge problem in and of themselves but they're taking fishing nets and what the what these fishermen collect in the way of garbage and actually um upcycling that and they just opened a new store in milan where they're featuring a lot of those designs that are made out of fabrics from upcycled garbage so i think um again it's it's new york it's los angeles it's also the european union <laughs> that is taking yeah. a lot of this on but then again companies looking to do what they can locally yeah yeah just um you know i was thinking of answering it um leadership should show um better <laughs> better uh examples and models of this however um and leadership from governments to corporations. However, I don't feel confident that that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I can't, it's funny because I, I, I do love the Hudson Valley. I can't mention enough how here, because I guess we have, we're lucky enough to have resources from a nature perspective, from an agricultural perspective, and, and I don't want anyone to think that agriculture does not impact the environment. It does impact the environment yeah. totally. Um, so I'm not, I, I, I'm aware of that. Uh, that we can have conversations like for, 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 this, for this interview, I visited some local wood sh uh, wool shops. Mm -hmm. And the, what they all have in common is that whether the wool is coming from Peru whether the wool's coming from further north and upstate or Western Mass or Vermont, they're trying to really keep it um, something local. So let's just say the wool is coming from uh, Vermont, but it's might be, it might be dyed in New York. And let's say it's coming from Peru, but they're working with smaller um, farmers instead mm -hmm. of the big industry. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's answering your question or not. Um, no, but I do think we're going to see QR codes around that soon yeah. and all kinds of identification tags mm -hmm. where you'll be able to scan something and you're going to know exactly what Anna's saying. Yeah. That, that's the story of that garment and that right. fiber. And, and I do believe the consumer is curious about that. Yeah, I would love to see that, the QR code system, exactly. be integrated more in this brand. Too. But I think, and this is based on how my memory is it? I don't know, mm -hmm. Jamie. Could, we knew all that information in the yeah. 60s, 70s. Not that I, I, I was not born. I was born in the, <laughs> my girl, in the 70s and 80s. We just knew information. Like there, for this research, I was even going to throw in uh, Sims, an educated Why? consumer. Exactly. Consumers were educated. Yeah. They really were. Like you could talk to anyone who grew up in the, the 60s, the 70s 80s i think in the 80s it shifted that they knew the difference between a cotton and an acrylic mm -hmm. and i'm not talking someone who was in the fashion industry i just think, I think they were consuming a lot less we were sure. consuming yeah. a lot less we have a consumption issue which we is, very much do which very much do. all the sustainability and i'm sorry sound harsh all the sustainability in the world is not going to we it's not mm -hmm. no and the un goal is i always yeah. remind the students the un goal is 2030. yeah so there was a it's recent study recent like friday or something exactly. like thursday or friday it, it, it's not yeah. i'm yeah. trying to be optimistic but i'm not done no it's hard a recent there was a recent berlin study that um it said in order to be in accordance with the paris climate agreement yeah. um we shouldn't be buying any more than five new garments a year wow. five new garments so now you know, maybe for your average customer out mm -hmm. there, maybe that's not uh, as, as difficult <laughs> as a fashion student. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. certainly, if, you know, if, if somebody really has to think about five new garments a year, mm -hmm. that's, that's, it, puts a, it puts a number on it. Yeah. yeah. It also has to do with the price point. The reason we are able to yeah. consume so much is because exactly. we artificially, we, consumers and corporations 
and manufacturers have artificially foreclosed, lowered this price, lowered the prices to a point where it's less it's just get rid of it yeah. has been embraced. And it's gonna mm -hmm. cost you more to replace that zipper than to just yeah, buy it. And that that and I remember that uh, that philosophy of that's or way of thinking. I remember hearing about it and hearing about it and hearing about it. And now it's just part of of, of our everyday speaking. It just mm -hmm. it should not be that yeah. way. I mean sometimes you go I go into homes and this other job I, I used to have, I used to go into homes mm -hmm. um, that were like hundred and something years old, and some of the things were still, some of the details and features, and even the some of the, the character was still there, and the owners were still there, and they were like, we don't want to change it, and we're scared someone's going to ruin, you know, not ruin it, mm -hmm. change it and destroy all the beauty of it and the history of it, and 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 it's true because we have this thing, just get rid of it, mm -hmm. new. And, and, and yeah. yeah, at the swap and shop, it'll be interesting because they're going, they're sorting through some of those donations right now. Mm -hmm. And if the garments are soiled or in disrepair in any way, yeah, yep, instead, of dump, instead of dumping mm -hmm. it, they're going to offer an option of turning it into scrunchies or oh, um, cutting up the fabric for the design good idea. students to use. So through the maker space, you can make a scrunchie that day. Oh, that's funny. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. That. yeah. But then that cool. goes back to again, and I mend and repair. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound like the good old days at all, or <laughs> too nostalgic. I don't. But there was a time where a grandma or a aunt or yourself would make things out of. Yeah. You know, My grandma would do that for me too. Yeah. I feel like it is. It is a generational thing. I think as well. Is well, at least like right now, the fashion industry is so oversaturated with these fast fashion brands and again like these younger consumers may not have that income right now to afford these more sustainable and responsible brands and I think that's why they're reaching for that lo lower price point um, retailers but I hope one day that these like corporations and just everyone in this industry can see that like what we're doing is not good and by 2030 like you were saying we we will see the results that we want to see. Well, it's only seven years away. It's only seven years away. And, you know, I do think a lot of people have, you know, it's interesting. Yesterday, Alden Wicker, who is a writer that I love mm -hmm. on Eco Cult, was writing that sustainable fashion to a degree does seem elitist yeah. <laughs> um, because of the, it can seem elitist because of the price points. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I always challenge the students to do a little bit of fast fashion math. And if you buy a t shirt mm -hmm. for $50, that's responsibly made yeah. and you wear it once a week yeah. it it it's, goes down to the same price as like an H&M t-shirt exactly well actually yeah, yeah. it's less because then if you were to buy a ten dollar t-shirt mm -hmm. and you after two times it wears out or bags out or yeah. doesn't give you the wear it's five dollars a wearing exactly plus if the fabric is like 60 to 70 or let's say a third mm -hmm. you know fabric generally is a third of the cost of that mm up to ten dollars yeah. could somebody have possibly been paid a fair decent living wage to that make too that, yeah exactly right? so um yeah i do think it, it definitely is a challenge it's seven years away <laughs> seven years away and that's but a lot of thinking brands. that's like yeah. a lot and, and i'm all for thinking I'm not, <laughs> I'm not putting down thinking but and that's where i think leadership should be much held much more responsible yeah. Because if you're trying to think all that as you're buying a T-shirt and you have three kids and you have to feed them in 25 minutes, that's not your you are, priority. Yeah, exactly. That is an, an awful lot of thinking for a lot of people. It's even become it's even a luxury to think about it, and exactly. that's not what exactly. It, I mean, fortunately, there are some more brands that are coming into the space that are more affordable. Yeah. You know, and I can certainly give you a whole <laughs> list of them. But yeah, please do. Um, <laughs> that, you know, it, it has been sort of elitist up until a certain point. But the same thing happened with, I think, um, I shouldn't say the same thing, but the, the same thing was happening, similar things were happening, or similar comments were happening with organic food. Mm -hmm. And, but, but the price you pay, considering the long lasting impact, mm -hmm. It's hard to make a comparison when you really start breaking it up and looking at it. 
and uh, making the, a parallel, uh, making making both of them parallel. It's mm -hmm. and and uh, and we. I'm sorry, <laughs> we have to curb our consumption. Yeah, we I really know. do collectively. That is like the biggest thing problem right now. We have right. to curb our, the, all the. You could right. unless the clothes are dissolving, and you can <laughs> you can throw them in a compost pile, yeah. and it dissolves, and those. And how it dissolves can provide nutrients mm -hmm. to the soil. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> but the I don't know if that's happening. Exactly. So I just I really we, yeah, I don't know, we I, have I, a consumption I, issue, an enormous consumption issue. Yeah, Im Imran Ahmed, who I love, mm, I love him. I wonderful, love him. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful, fashion. wonderful. So and I, I sat through last summer. He did a whole sustainability series, and I think he was a little frustrated at the end of it because <laughs> yeah. a lot of speakers and a lot of opinions. And to your point, you know, where do we go from here? And um, there's a quote I always think of that he says, you know, spend a little more and buy a little less. Mm -hmm. And, um, Very you true. know, kind of the wrap up of this is like, as an industry, we need to be making less clothes and of better quality. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think those are two huge statements as to kind of the leadership that we should be taking going right. forward. Right. We, we should. And, and but but I think that's going to happen even if leadership is not going to do it. But maybe. You, you as a consumer, you as an individual, mm -hmm. you as someone, do a deeper dive into yeah. into just meeting something that's going the impact, mm -hmm. like a, a, a some something. I I, I don't know. It's, um, mm -hmm. I I think we have. I don't think sustainability, and I'm not trying to be gloom and doom or mm -hmm. unhope, not hopeful here, um, is going to get us out. It, it's it's a it's a big it's a big. Uh, it really is, issue. yeah. Um, I want to close today's episode out with a segment we like to call word of mouth. The best advice can't be found in a textbook, but rather through word of mouth. The importance of networking and face-to-face -face conversations is crucial in terms of obtaining helpful career advice as real life experience is the most valuable form of education. In this segment, I will ask you the same question we ask all of our guests, which is what is your reaction to how Marist students are fighting for change? I, I think it is, it's one of the reasons that attracted me here. Yeah. You know, I, I think we have an incredibly active and vocal campus mm -hmm. where people aren't afraid to question, and we encourage them to question, but mm -hmm. they also think out of the box, you know, and, and we, I, I love that out of the box thinking mm -hmm. and applying solution-based thinking yeah. to our problems today. Yeah. And so I am very, I'm very encouraged. That's I am very yeah. encouraged. You know, it's interesting. Just getting back to the beginning, because mm -hmm. everything always goes back to the beginning. I didn't, I didn't, and I tell my students this. Mm -hmm. I didn't follow a path of um, education. I wanted to be a teacher, and then I became a pro no. Um, mm -hmm. This opportunity presented itself, and 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 I and I and I took I I I, I applied, um, and. To much of my surprise, and it really warms my heart, when you start teaching and interacting with the students mm -hmm. and just getting to know them a little bit, yeah. that's where I do see hope. Yeah. That's, where that's where I where we can create impact. And actually, those are the voices and those are the students, even the one I mentioned and the, mm -hmm. and the other student with the, the plastic. I, I, that's where I say, Anna, you can't get negative because if you do, you're not it's not fair for them because they're working so hard, they're working so passionately, and they and they are so committed to wanting improvements. Yes, for sure. So it's just, again, you talk to the students, and sometimes I, I try not to pry, but I'm just so intrigued by them. Mm -hmm. Not just so that, so I'm like, yeah, so tell me more about this stuff, so tell me more, in hopes that they can one day just blossom and take it to the level or the direction mm -hmm. um, we so need in, 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 on this planet. Yeah, so. I think that is something that is very common in this generation and just this group of students, especially here at Maris, is that we all are trying to fight for that change and are trying to make that impact because we do hopefully want this world to be better than it is currently when we are older. Um, so hopefully we can make those changes. Yeah, and yeah. you know, amazingly, 
that you all reach out to even the other students. You know, we had a sustainability conference mm -hmm. uh, last year, and the students, and, and also the exhibit, and the students, we, they, they were very vocal about wanting to make an impact with other schools and reach out to other schools. And we yeah, had that's amazing. Oh, over 100 outside attendees, mm -hmm. <laughs> which yeah. I think is, is just so admirable, and um, it just sh shows the, the impact that they're trying to have, yeah. yes. and we're trying to have. Yes, and and they have so much fascinating things to say, and I always tell them, say it, don't be shy. You're, yeah. and I, I'm believe it or not, I I can be a shy person, so <laughs> I, I I can relate to that. But they do have such wonderful things to say, and that's what keeps me that and many other things keeps mm -hmm. my hope going that yeah. it will shift. Oh. <laughs> I want to thank you both so much for taking the time to come on today's podcast. I learned so much from the both of you, and I had so much fun. Um, but I think it's time for class, so we yes. should probably yes, go. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for inviting us yeah, and again giving us this platform to, to have no, these discussions. Yeah, so thank it you. was helpful and informative. It was. It was. Thank you so much. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to our episode of Shift the Narrative. If you liked this episode, please be sure to leave us a review follow our page, and follow us at Silver Needle Runway on all of our platforms for Shift the Narrative podcast updates. Talk to you soon.